Hey guys, good morning. Welcome. We're talking about the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. Jesus is an incredibly famous sermon made to his disciples, not to the crowd. This was to the disciples. And I guess for a good reason. You see, the characteristics described in the Beatitudes are the characteristics that should follow those who claim to be believers. It all begins by being poor in spirit. We come in humility, depending upon God for all things that are good and for salvation itself. And then I'm linking the poor in spirit with the pure in heart, which is Beatitude on the verse, chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall surely see God. So we're talking about purity. We're talking about holiness. And happy are the holy is the term that we're kind of looking at right now. But purity of heart is a, is a, is a paramount of paramount importance. We said yesterday that purity of heart is part of the process of God working in you, ultimately to work through you. We spoke about the priority of purity. And we said that how Jesus and God are always looking for those who are pure in heart. You want to get God's attention, people? This is where it's at. Purity of heart, the desire for holiness, the hatred for sin. These are the criteria of those that would be seen by God to be ones that God would want to use. So I would like to take you to a passage talking about purity in heart of developing on that theme by saying the purity of heart is as a price if you don't live it. The price for impurity of heart, that's a big deal. And I have for you an example today found in Judges chapter 14, and it's the story of Samson. Here was Samson, a man who was so ordained of God for a purpose. He was empowered by God to an incredible supernatural extent, and yet he messed up, not because he didn't have the strength, but because God gave him the strength, but the strength was given on the basis of his personal purity. Samson, however, really battled in this particular area. And we read a number of times in chapter 14 of the book of Judges. First of all, uh, verse 8, it says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. You see, power is the evidence of those who walk, walk in purity with God. And then again in verse 19, The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. But how tragic, tragic it is, in chapter 16, all of a sudden, Samson has messed up badly at the point of personal purity. He's chasing after other, other idols. He's chasing after people that she shouldn't be chasing after. He's messing around with the power that God had given. He forsakes the purpose of God for the purpose of the world around him. And how sad it is that we read in chapter 16, it says, But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Here he is grinding out the corn as a result of impurity. You see, Delilah came, tempted him at the point of purity. He messed up. For a while he was able to hold back the Philistines. But then when the Philistines came upon him and his purity had been messed up to such an extent that he lost his power, he gave away the secret of his power. The Philistines bound him. They took out of his eyes and they stuck him in a pit to grind out the corn like a donkey would have done. He ended up doing the work of an ass. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what happened here? What happened from the point of power and the point of anointing for the purpose of God to the point where he did not realize that God had left him? And so he stood to drive up those, off those Philistines after he had given away his secret and his power was gone all because his purity had gone. You see, Samson couldn't control himself. You know, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. It's a beautiful fruit of the Spirit. It's what the last one on the list because it's the fruit of the Spirit that, that self-control holds all the other aspects of the fruit together. And if you want to experience self-control, you will have the power that comes not just to do that, but the power to fulfill the purpose of God at the same time. Self-control is self control. God's not going to control you people. You can ask him and pray for that until you blew in the face. And God says self-control is exactly that. It's self-control. 
you have to learn to control yourself. Unfortunately, Samson couldn't do it. Samson's inner lust and his inner desire for other stuff was just too strong. So he was controlled by the things outside of him. He was controlled by the things that were not of God. He was controlled by the things that were valuable to the world. And he succumbed to the peer pressure of being using his power for the wrong reason. No self-control there. So that's a good lesson for us to start with. The presence of impurity in your life will surely affect the power of God in your life, for your life to be one out through your life. Impurity, people, is a big deal. And we need to make sure that our motives and our intentions are not just, he's not just talking about moral purity here. He's talking about ethical purity, purity of your word, living out your promises, living out the things that you said that you would do. These are all part of the purity of what it means to follow God. We've got to have a pure heart. Self-control is the answer. Have a good day. Bye.